Taste development, perception, and food preference in young children are important cornerstones in the understanding on how children can develop healthy eating patterns. Catherine A. Forstell, a professor in the psychology department at the College of William and Mary, Williamsburg, Virginia, presented the interesting key facts to this topic at the 95th Nestle Nutrition Institute online workshop. Flavor is a powerful determinator of eating behavior and food choices. Although flavor and taste are often used interchangeably in everyday language, flavor refers to the integrated sensation of taste, smell or olfaction and chemosensation. While taste consists of about five sensations, that is, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, savory, or umami, smell experiences are much broader, consisting of many thousands of odors. Chemosensation, such as temperature or tingle, is also an important contributor to flavor perception. However, in her talk, Catherine Forstell focused on sweet and bitter taste preferences and their development early in life. The child's flavor world is very different in comparison with that of adults. Already at birth, the newborn baby has a preference for sweet taste sensation and a dislike for sour and bitter taste sensation. This preference for sweet is universal. The good news is that this is not our destiny, and a child can learn to accept and like flavors through sensory experiences throughout early developmental stages. Children's preference for sweetness is heightened as shown by the significantly higher preferred level of sucrose or sugar concentration by 5 to 10 year old children, compared with that of adults. This preference for higher levels of sweetness in children typically lasts into adolescence. Some food for thought. In nature, bitterness is often associated with poisons, while sweetness is associated with readily available carbohydrates or calories. From an evolutionary perspective, Children's basic biology serve important biological functions, predisposing children to favor foods and beverages that are high in sugar content, thus ensuring calories that are needed for their accelerated growth, and dislike bitter-tasting green vegetables. Various research show that a child can learn to accept and like flavors through sensory experiences and exposure, even very early in life. During the last trimester of pregnancy, the unborn baby is already able to suck, taste, and smell. Moreover, the amniotic fluid provides exposure to various food flavors from the mother's diet, such as anise, garlic, carrot, or fruit flavors. Similarly, breast milk contains food flavors from the mother's diet, providing the baby with a further exposure to a variety of food flavors. First evidence from a clinical study shows that pre- or postnatal experience with a specific food flavor can enhance the infant's acceptance and consumption of this specific flavor during complementary feeding. Another good news, infants continue to learn about new flavors also during the period of complementary feeding through repeated exposure and dietary variety. Several research show that repeated exposure to a bitter-tasting vegetable, such as green beans or to a variety of vegetables, increases consumption and liking of green beans by those infants. Why is this early flavor learning important? Evidence from first longitudinal studies suggest that fruit and vegetable intake in school-aged children was predicted by their mother's preferences for healthy foods, breastfeeding duration, and early fruit and vegetable experiences during complementary feeding.